Hello, I saw this little flying wing kit on Banggood a while ago, so I thought I'd pick it up because it was pretty cheap. It's like $20, I think. Yes, 20 It might have actually been 19 something when I got it. Uh, and it looks like they are trying to make something that's quite similar to the, the Tech Sumo and the Bonsai. So both of those planes are pretty good. This one has a fairly more shallow sweep on the wings, so I'm not sure how that's going to affect the flight. Um, and it's sort of in between the size of them. I think Bonsai is 600 millimeters and the Tech Sumo is about 1000, so it's sort of right in the middle. Um, and they are saying that it is uh, flying weight 165 grams. Somehow I don't think it's going to be quite that light by the time I get done with it. Um, but that is also sort of similar to the Bonsai as well. Um, so because it was cheap, I th just thought I would you know, get it and take a look. Um, and you can see they build it up here and put a little pod sort of a thing on the top instead of cutting into the wing. So um, in that respect, it's a little bit like the flight test mini arrow that I made um, recently. Um, and pictures down there. Not doesn't look like too many people have bought this yet. There's one, or oh, there's two reviews. They both seem to think it's pretty good, so that's a good sign. Um, so I just thought I'd <clears throat> show you what's in the box, and then I'll put it together. There is a link to the website here, dwhobby.com, but when I looked at the website, I found that there's nothing there. <laughs> All they have, uh, DW is Dancing Wings, by the way. You can see they've put a um, fav icon file onto the website, but there's absolutely nothing else in there, even if you look at the page source, there's nothing. So I'm guessing this is a fairly new company, and they're so new that they're... I guess focusing on making the product instead of making the website, but that is a shame that they don't have um, something else. I was hoping that they might have something else that was cheap that would be interesting to try as well. Um, anyway, so what do we get in here? Um, oh, wait a minute. Uh, hang on a minute. If I take it out of the box off camera, that doesn't count as an unboxing, okay? Okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, what you get. There is a pretty nice set of instructions and this is what they're suggesting you use. There's a ducted fan version as well which I um, actually have to admit I didn't really look into what that, how that differs from this one but uh, anyway that's the specs that they are recommending for it. Um, it probably doesn't even really require much in the way of instructions but they have given you some pretty nice colorful um, photos and everything to show how it works and the CG is mentioned there that's about all you really need to know I guess. Um, so you get the wing pieces and winglets and then you get um, a little bit of carbon fiber looking stuff oh sorry that's heat shrink and then there's this sort of uh, flat thin piece of maybe carbon fiber yeah 50-30 uh, prop by the looks of it yep uh, and a big thing of glue, which fortunately is not hardened. Sometimes this stuff arrives and the glue is just a solid block that you can't use. But that one, although it is leaking, uh, still seems like it might be usable. And there are also a couple of the uh, little tie rod things in there, which are also carbon fiber by the looks of it. So it seems like they want you to use the same method as the bonsai for connecting the servos to the servo horn on the ele on the elevon which is kind of weird with the you know how you put the heat shrink on and a bit of ca into it and just hope that it stays there uh, and over here we have what i think is plywood yes that is plywood well you probably can't see it but it's a pretty thin piece of plywood too looks like two millimeter plywood laser cut and painted black so I don't know why it really needs to be painted but I guess it's a, a nice touch uh, so let's see what we have in here all right so the wings are you know, that's all gr grotty isn't it I'm not sure what happened there but the dye is gone on there anyway uh, mostly white on the bottom and then you got this sort of rainbowy I guess color pattern on the top uh, the servo cutouts are not going all the way through and they're quite shallow 
I think the instru <coughs> instructions recommend to use a 6 gram servo, which um, I don't have any of, but I think a 9 gram servo will be fine. And there is a spar along the front leading edge of the wing. It uh, feels a little bit softer than the Bonsai and the Texumo, this phone. Although, I don't know, maybe it's about the same. And it looks like it's not quite a symmetrical section there, but it's not far away from symmetrical. That's at the root. And at the tip, the tip it almost looks like it is symmetrical. Oh no, not quite. Anyway, um, well, that's not very good, is it? You lift this end up, the, the other side doesn't even move. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the um, attachment for the Elevon is going to go on there, isn't it? Yeah, it's right at the base of the Elevon there, so... Maybe you have to do quite a bit more, put a bit more of a cut into here to uh, loosen it up because the way it is at the moment, that's just not going to work, is it? Look, see what I mean? Right, right down here, it's not even moving. Oh, it goes down. Doesn't go up though. Anyway, I'm sure we can solve that. Uh, and then we have uh, just winglets here. So that's the same as Texumo and Bonsai as well. You just got to glue those, glue those on the end. Alright, so that is what you get in the kit. I um, haven't actually decided what motor I'm going to put on here, but it will probably be an 1804. That's working okay on my bonsai. Um, and I have another one spare, so um, yeah, that's probably what I'll do. The battery they uh, say to use here is um, uh, 2S 800 milliamp hours. Pretty small, but I'll give that a try and um, see how it goes. After I bent the Elevons back to the extreme a few times they seem to have come loose enough to the point where it's uh, it's actually decent when you move right at the tip here all the way down to the other end actually goes up quite a bit so that's fine. I found that when I cut that little bottom piece out of the wing uh, I didn't need to enlarge the hole you know horizontally I just just cut the bottom out and it was perfect fit for a 9 gram servo, you can probably see it just fits beautifully flush with the bottom, maybe half a millimeter indented, that's about all, and I just tacked it in there with a little bit of hot glue, almost didn't need the hot glue because when I shoved it in it was really really nice and tight and you need to cut a little channel for the servo wire there, but it's actually going to be right in the middle of the wing um, where you have to glue them together, so I'm not sure might have to just pull it out like that a bit to glue them, I think. It's probably what we're going to need. Interesting that there's a handwritten something or other on there. So somebody's been writing things on this for some reason. Sorry, I missed this before, but of course they do get, also give you these little um, attachment thingies to put on the ailerons and a little Z-bend piece of wire as well. They are the zip tie kind of ones where you put put a little tab on the back on one side and then slide it through and it goes click 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 and tightens up but uh, inevitably I find that you also need some hot glue to hold it tight as well. Little thingies that they give you to stick in here for the uh, elevons, uh, they don't actually come through to the other side. I cut a little groove but it doesn't come out so you can't actually use it in the way that they are made which is like a zip tie, you know, you put, put one side in, put one piece on from each side. So I'm just going to have to glue just use glue only from one side and hope for the best. Although I think what I'll do is I'll take a tip from Andrew Newton and I'll put a little piece of plastic card around this and glue that down as well just to give it a bit more area. So I've just hot glued that in from the top only and I've put a little piece of thin plastic over the top, at, top of it as Andrew suggested. And it looks like I could use a little bit more glue at the front there but I'll see how it goes just like that for now. Um, I think it'll be okay. I have to admit, it doesn't happen very often, but every now and then an Aussie has a good idea. I'm beginning to see a problem here. These uh, servo horn thingies or whatever they are that they included in the kit are very flimsy. Look how 
um, flexible they are sideways. Now they don't flex this direction, I mean that direction in line in line with the uh, the thin part of it. So that's fine. But the thing is, unless you get your pushing force from your servo to be exactly in line with that thin part in that direction, you're going to be pushing and your servo is going to be pushing like this and some of the energy of this push is going to be going to bend the thing sideways. So you really need to make sure that you're exactly lining up your pushing force to go against that direction like that. So I have a feeling this is not going to work very well and I might have to take it out and I'll probably throw it away to be honest and use one of the other um, I have some other ones of these that I bought from Hobby King that are a bit nicer so I'll probably use some of those instead but I'll just see how it goes with the stuff that came in the kit first and if it fails well it fails as predicted these thingies are fucking useless see this well I shouldn't speak so harshly it's, if I put them on straight they might be okay but they're just way too soft. So I'll fly it like this and see what happens. Might be okay. I mean, I find that with the flying wing, most of the time you need to be pulling up a little bit anyway, to even just to go level. Like about there is probably going to be flying level. And the problem is when it's pushing to go down, which you don't really do all that often, I find. So, so there, there's the problem. Boing, just twists over to the side like that. <laughs> uh, so I'll give it a try. Who knows? It might just work out okay. We'll see. I found that when I laid the two wing halves flat on the table and pushed them together, they did the seam here didn't quite meet up perfectly vertical. Um, I think the the Texumo was pretty nice like that. So the Texumo made the bottom of it perfectly flat. Uh, but this one, if I did that, I'd have to sort of rely on the Gorilla Glue that I'm going to use to foam up a little bit in the middle and hold it, uh, fill that small gap. So what I decided to do is actually give it a little bit of the dihedral that it's going to need to bring these surfaces perfectly together. And that sort of makes it difficult to hold together while it's drying. So what I've come up with is this little harness system. It's just some of the um, tie rod uh, metal pins poked through. And it's not glued yet. I'm just going to glue it now but I thought I'd share this uh, way of holding it together so this holds it perf holds those two surfaces there perfectly flat against each other uh, and I don't have to you know stand there and hold it myself and it's going to keep <clears throat> keep the natural dihedral that these two wing pieces would have had from that cut being not quite straight I'm not not sure if that's intentional or not but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep a tiny little bit of dihedral it should be Shouldn't make much difference, really. I just thought I'd mention that. This is the little electronics pod that you put together from plywood. Uh, I've just sort of stuck it together, dry fit at the moment. Uh, it's a nice idea, but it's, I can see a few potential problems with it to start with. One is that there's a bit of an overhang here, and the motor that I was going to use was this 1804. Uh, and if I put that on there, it's going to be too big so I'm gonna to have to cut a bit out of here I think if I want to use that well, I'm not sure which motor I'll use but if I use this one I'm gonna to have to cut a bit out of there to to get it to sit down properly uh, the other thing is that when you attach this to the wing it's gonna be stuck on top of the wing like that then it's gonna be very difficult to get at the screws in here because you're gonna to have to get your screwdriver down in there and somehow try and undo the screws for the motors if you want to change the motor or something um, the other thing that's sort of a bit maybe not good, probably okay, but um, I don't like it a whole lot, is that when the motor th pushes on here to thrust the plane forward, the thrust of the motor is you're going to rely on these tabs here, these six tabs, which you're going to have to cut a little groove into the EPP on top of the wing to glue it down on. You're relying on these six tabs to push the plane forward. Um, and I much prefer the way that the bonsai, <coughs> bonsai and the Texumo do it, where the motor is 
attached to a piece that's going to be pushing quite solidly from behind the wing and you're not requiring uh, you're not relying on little tabs to dig into the EPP on one side to push it because this mount motor mount goes all the way around so it's uh, you know top to bottom and it's a lot easier to get at the screws on the back there to change the motor if you wanted to in the future or something like that um, so I guess this one is kind of nice in that gives you a little uh, pocket to put your ESC in there and maybe something uh, kind of nice to maybe mount a camera on the top of this flat piece that's kind of handy I guess after I glued the winglets on and glued the wings together I noticed that it was very light I could if I held it above my head with the nose pointing down at about 45 degrees or so and I just let it go it would glide fairly nicely across the living room at least not not too far of course but um, yeah it just felt very very light for its wingspan so I thought I'd have a little change of plans and for the time being I would not build it as a powered plane I would try and make a little slope saw out of it because there is a small slope just outside my house which uh, turned out to be too small for the Hobby King Ridge Rider but I thought if the plane was just light enough it might work <laughs> It was an, an interesting challenge to go for, I thought, anyway. Uh, so this battery is a one-cell 800 milliamp hour LiPo that I salvaged from a pack that uh, the other cells were damaged somehow. Hmm, no idea how that happened. Uh, and this cell was a good one, so I kept that. And I put on here a Flysky IA6B receiver without the case, just to save a little bit of weight. Um, bringing everything right to the front to keep the CG where the makers of the kit tell you to put the CG and I found that this receiver and the servos that I'm using worked very well on a 1S power supply right down to about 3.5 volts or so I think I didn't really check how far it would go down or if I did I forgot but I wasn't intending to go down past 3.5 volts anyway and the reason that I chose the IA6B instead of the slightly smaller three channel receivers that I um, actually I don't have any spare anyway but the point was that I wanted to know if this battery was going below 3.5 volts so I could stop um, and I found some tape this is Scotchgard um, tape and this actually sticks to EPP fairly well which is a, quite a surprise so I've started using that for this plane uh, and that's about all there is to it actually I added some couple more wires coming from here up to the pins on the top and it's ready to go and it was about 120 grams or so I think by the time I got it all ready and oh there we go there's the wires and I had to add a little bit of nose weight there this two dollars twenty um, and the CG is supposed to be there this is around about in line with the front of the two servos if you drew a line between the front of the two servos it'd be about there I found that for at least what I was trying to do with the slope soaring this was too far uh, forward yeah so I actually ended up with it about a centimeter and a half back so that's a little bit behind the back of the servos there uh, so I had to take this off because it just gave me an immediate nose dive every time I tried to throw it anyway that is um, is that all oh yeah after a while I tried cutting into the back of the um, flaps of the ailerons and this improved things immensely but I had to be very very careful I, I basically just dragged my cutter knife across here without applying any pressure at all and even so I still managed to cut through to the other side a little bit but it's still hanging there and um, it flies basically there's no problems whatsoever with the the ailerons being twisty anymore anyway let's have a look at some flying I'm going to take this off actually because it seems like it's too nose heavy at the moment and this tape is really good oh that's a bit better take all of this nose weight off wouldn't it be nice if actually taking this off is exactly what we need Ready? Okay, it seems a little bit more flyable actually. So <clears throat> you can see that uh, when I plug 
the power in, make sure I get this the right way. We can see the voltage there, 4.15. So almost fully charged uh, cell there. So let's go and see how it flies. So I'm just going to try it here on the flat first. Look at this. Oh, it wants to fly. Oh, oh shit. I see. <laughs> it wants to fly. Uh, but like I say, this is all, it's just flat. But there's, uh, there's a decent amount of wind, so I think I'll just try it here for starters. And unfortunately the wind's going the wrong way for me to use this larger slope here. But there's a very small slope over there which is facing the right direction, which I might try if this goes well. Anyway, let's uh, see, how, see how it goes. Oh, it's not bad. But it seems to have enough uh, lifting capacity. It certainly goes up quite a bit when I throw. I'm just throwing it directly forwards here. I'm actually going to throw it down here. Okay, so it's getting pushed back. It's not really going as... Oh, maybe it's alright, I don't know. I guess because there's no slope, it's always going to get pushed back, isn't it? So I'm going to throw it there. <laughs> okay, we're over here now, but uh, it's not really much of a slope. As you can see, it's barely even any slope at all and it's very very shallow but no oh, whatever I'll give it a try hmm I think the winds died down now come on flying it like this. <laughs> well I've been out here for about 20 minutes now and it's not really going as well as I'd hoped. It just the wind just seems to... there's not, not as much wind as there was when I was over there. I looked at the weather forecast and it looks pretty good a couple of days from now I should be able to use the other hill over there. The wind will be coming from the other direction so I think I'll just cut the video here and jump to two days from now. We have the perfect conditions, or at least the perfect direction of wind for this slope now. So let's give this a try. Oh, oh come on, come on. <laughs> Still not enough wind? Really? There. Uh, okay, it's, <laughs> it's getting pushed back, isn't it? So I just need some more weight on, maybe. But, pretty sure this is enough wind. Oh yeah! <laughs> it's kind of, kind of doing it. No, no, no. Get pushed back.
Yeah, it's just getting back, back, back and back and back. Yeah, it's close, but it just can't make headway. So let me put the, put a two dollar coin on the bottom again. Okay, so I've attached the two dollar coin here. This is where the CG is for the plane at the moment. I have a feeling this is not going to be quite enough, but um, I can always just add another one, maybe. <coughs> Unfortunately, it started raining now, so. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this today after all, which is a pity because the wind coming from this direction is so rare. It only happens like once a month or so from what I've what I've seen so far. So this is really annoying. Not very convincing, but it is. It's staying in the air at least. Woo! <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah! Uh, uh. Well, that wasn't too bad. Okay. Oh yeah, it's coming back. It's still still getting pushed back, isn't it? Yeah. Just when I thought I'd spend all I needed to spend on this model. Oh, another two. Yeah, let's try that, eh? That'll work, probably. No, 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 no. Ah, feels maybe a little too heavy now. It's going forwards though. It's quite wobbly. Very wobbly, but it's staying in the air miraculously. Oh, that was uh, see, that was totally unintended. It's it's very very difficult just to keep it facing in one direction. I think maybe these winglets are too small or something. Ah. Well, it's definitely staying in the air. <laughs> Boy, it's a challenge though. Man. It's nothing like flying at the beach. Holy shit, the beach made this really easy. Oh, that looked good. Ah, just still... I don't know. Still get pushed back, is that the problem? Fucking hell. Ah, shit. See how hard it is to launch? I just nudged it like that, and it goes boom! Ah, fuck. Well... It was only a matter of time, I suppose, wasn't it? It's completely dead. Wait a minute, this is actually not, not much of a problem. I know exactly who to call about this.
Hello, this is International Rescue. International Rescue, yeah. Um, I have a, uh, a, um, a, a seaplane <laughs> uh, crashed into the river over here in New Zealand. You think you can help with that? Yeah, no worries, mate. We'll be right onto it. Oh, awesome. Wait a minute. Did you say you're from New Zealand? Uh, yeah, yeah, New Zealand. Aren't you the guy that was making fun of Aussies just before? Oh, just a bit of fun, you know. I didn't, didn't really mean anything by it, it's, you know. Oh, sorry. Actually, I remember we've got something else on this morning. Uh, I've got a new plane I've got to make. Oh, come on, man. useless. Well so much for that plan. Let's try plan B. A big wiggly stick. Ah oh, come on. It was over there just before I could have reached it with this. Alright so I've put a, now a third stick on my sticks, long stick thing. Yep that's good. Hey! So, uh, in case you hadn't noticed, this is not just water. This is the uh, effluent that flows down from the milking sheds. So it's cow shit and water and cow piss. <laughs> Which is why I'm very careful not to fall in there and why you get such a mess on everything that falls in there. Anyway, I got my $4 back. Hey! I know what you're thinking, but it wasn't like it wasn't already wet before, right? This is now, now it's just clean and wet. Well, I think that's going to have to be the end of this particular video. I would like to take this to the beach and see how it goes out there. Um, I think still it may be just not quite, this hill out there is just not quite going to do it, even for this one at 120 grams. Well, it was 120 grams before I put these on, so I'll try and figure out how much these $2 coins weigh and let you know what the, the total weight of it is at the moment, minus the water, of course. Um, but it's going to have to dry out for a good few days, I would imagine, and I might have to... F this battery might be stuffed as well, so I'll have to probably figure out a different battery to use with it. So until then, um, yeah, it's going to be sitting around drying. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.